Hello, Willow Creek kids. How is everybody doing this week? I hope we had a good week. I know we're getting closer and closer to the end of school. I hope you guys are finishing strong. Um, I did want to give you just a brief announcement. I got a great uh, video from Robert's mom. He learned the Lord's Prayer. So if any of you during this quarantine time, when we were still doing the Lord's Prayer, if you guys want and you guys memorize the Lord's Prayer, or even if you've memorized it before, and you want to have your parents videotape it and send it to me, I would love to see it. I think that is fantastic. And so um, with that, uh, I want to do a quick recap as well. Because remember, we're not doing the Lord's Prayer anymore. We're going back to before we even started the Lord's Prayer. We're going way back before the quarantine. And remember, we did a quick um, recap last week where we talked about Naaman. And if you guys uh, didn't get a chance to see Naaman, remember uh, uh, what we did is we I found the video for you guys on Superbook. And you guys can go to Right Now Media and search Superbook. You can find Season 3, Episode 5, and it talks about Naaman and the Servant Girl. So if you didn't get a chance to see that last week, feel free to watch that this week. And so that way you can recap kind of where we left off. And then after, remember... Um, Naaman was one of the generals of the army of Syria. And last week, we last week we talked about how God's kings, the kings of Israel, were not following God. They were not doing what was ple pleasant in the eyes of the Lord. And so we talked about how the king of Assyria, not Syria like Naaman was, but Assyria, and we talked about how they um, got captured. And God allowed all of them to get captured. And then we talked about how there was one group left. And the one group left was the Judah. The tribe of Judah was the very last group that was left that was still following the Lord. And so who was next to them was Samaria. So if you remember from last week, we talked about how Judah was not happy with the people of Syria or of Samaria. Judah was not happy with all the other tribes who had turned their back on the Lord. And so they got very bitter. And so they were the bitter enemies of the people of Samaria. And remember, we talked about the people of Samaria were also known as Samaritans. And we talked about how Jesus helped mend that relationship with the Samaritans when he came and he talked to the woman at the well. And so we're going to talk this week about three more kings, okay? These three kings came from Judah. Judah, the one tribe that was still left that was following the Lord. And they had a group that suddenly, a group of kings that were not doing the right things. They were building altars. They were worshiping the prophet Baal. They went over and learned what the Samaritans were worshiping. And they brought it back to their people. And so they had a long line. And then we get to one that was Ahaz. King Ahaz was not a good king. He went up on the hills and he built these tall altars and he was worshiping um, the wrong things. He was not worshiping the true God. But then he died and his son Hezekiah took over. And God had allowed the king of Assyria come to come and capture and take over the people when Ahaz was the king. But when Hezekiah came, he was still under ca captivity, but what he did is he went back to the land and he opened up the temples his father had closed. And he told the people, and he told the people, we need to worship Passover. We need to observe Passover. And right now, uh, Pastor Kevin in his sermons is talking about Moses. And he's getting ready to talk about Passover very soon. And so if you watch the sermons with that with your parents that Pastor Kevin is doing, then you will hear about Passover very soon. But we are past that point now. And so we are talking about Hezekiah. And so he knew about Passover and how it was a very important Jewish holiday. And so they um, he sent out letters to some of the other neighboring tribes, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. And some of them laughed at the messengers. And they said, we're not going to go where you guys are. We've got our own kings that we're worshiping. We have our own prophets that we're worshiping. And they didn't listen. But some of the people humbled themselves and said, yes, 
We want to go back to the way we are supposed to be worshiping, who we are supposed to be worshiping. And so God blessed Hezekiah and they came out from under the people that they were, uh, the kings of Assyria, and they were able to thrive again. But Hezekiah didn't live forever. And sure enough, his son, Manasseh, went back to all the old ways of his grandfather Ahaz. He closed down the temple again. He built all the altars that his dad had knocked down. He started worshiping the prophet Baal. And so God, once again, allowed them to get conquered. And so this becomes a back and forth and back and forth. The people stop worshiping God. And so there's somebody important who was a prophet during this time. His name was Isaiah. I know you guys have heard about Isaiah. And so this is where our verse today comes from. It comes from Isaiah 32, 1. And it says, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness. Now, Isaiah is not saying that a new king is coming pretty soon. He is giving prophecy. And the king he is talking about is Jesus. And now you remember, when Jesus was born, was he born like a real king? in a castle no he was born in the stable but he is the king of kings and the lord of lords he's the king of our hearts he is the king of where we're supposed to be in our spiritual lives and so we have to make sure that we worship him and so that is what isaiah was talking about because the kings were going back and forth back in those times of a bad king and a good king and a couple of bad kings, and then finally they get another good king. And so that is our story, is the, to realize that God will come into our lives. It doesn't matter if we stray away. He always wants us to come back to him, and he will always forgive us. Now, Jesus was the only king to ever come that was perfect. Even King Hezekiah was not a perfect king. He still sinned. But God blessed him because he always tried to come back and do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And so that is where we end our story today. And next week we're going to pick up with some exciting stories. Okay, so let's end with prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I just thank you for these times that we can come together and we can read your word. We can see how you can work in our lives just like you worked in the lives of the kings from so far away, from so long ago. Be with us, Lord. Help us to ask for forgiveness when we do what's wrong in your eyes and help us to make it right. And we love you so much, Lord. Thank you so much for being there for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next week.